So we have got the latest episode of Mr. Garden Labs podcast. <clears throat> is now renamed to Padded Walls. It was our nuance for the first for the first little trial episode. Now they're on the first real episode. They're calling it uh, uh, Padded Walls, which is a better name. That is a better name. The N word. Yeah, that is the uh, that is the top. That is the title. So, <laughs> I am not Dan from JSTalk has sent us a version with all the slurs cut out. So hopefully we can watch it just all the way without worrying too much and be totally fine for monetization. It'll be great. Let's just skip that intro song though. Hi everyone. Um, I spent eight hours today at the hair salon. Uh, I'm not happy with the results and I'm- Welcome to happy. episode one of Beady Little Eyes. <laughs> Welcome to Welcome to episode one of Beady Little Jew Eyes. Wow, the mixing is already horrendous. One of them is significantly louder than the other. That's great. With your host. Max. Max Parson. And me, your second host, um, Leah Jane. Today, we're going to talk about a very serious topic. But before we talk about the, that serious topic, I want you all to know that Max wanted me to start recording so he could tell the story of why he got him and his partner kicked out of a writing group. Go ahead. Now, this is the second group? Like oh, a creative man. group I've gotten kicked go. out of since then. I want to hear this story, but I need to grab a drink quickly. Literally two seconds. Moved to Oregon. Um, and then there's another friend group in LA that I got kicked out of also. So, dating me has been very socially costly for Shaylin. But this one, <laughs> um, so you're supposed to do a share, okay? And you say oh, how no. you've been doing. Oh, no. And <laughs> this is. <laughs> The worst question a normal you can possibly ask Mr. Girl. Have you been doing recently? What's on your mind? What have you been thinking about? Uh, how it's affecting your writing process each week. And the first time I did this, we were at the host's house. <clears throat> or no, not the first time. The first time there was like a problem. And I was talking about YouTube and I was just, and you have 10 minutes to do your share. So like, it's like a 10 minute rant basically that every person goes on. So I was like, I want to slip my wrist in front of YouTube's headquarters. And, um, because how have you been? They've been? Let me tell you about my third rape <laughs> from YouTube. So and, for ever, for everyone who doesn't know, who's just watching this for the first time, Max was banned. From I YouTube. used to, I was banned from YouTube. Yeah, I'm, I've been from Patreon. I've been banned from YouTube four times now, but I was banned from Patreon. I've been from Patreon and Twitch, TikTok. I've been banned from everywhere, and I want them to f drink my blood and get sick <laughs> with it. And, um. And then, so that was happening. And then also during my share, um, I think it was during my share, uh, Shaylin started moving her foot around because she gets like antsy. She starts bouncing around and she, she, she gets like socially anxious when I start talking. <laughs> yeah, that makes and, sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like if I, and if she can oh, tell I'm like winding man. up to like so say like real. a big thing, she's like, just, like, just start. And so she I was like, hey, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think this isn't necessarily specific to me. I think that a lot of women get panicked and embarrassed when, when the attention like... isn't on them. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> but also specifically when their boyfriend or husband or whatever like is talking or like, telling a story. Sure. They're like. That's why I don't can't... let Connor talk online. That's why nobody knows about him. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's too anxiety provoking. I just don't even want it to happen. But go ahead. So she starts shaking her foot around. I was like, "Hey, can you stop shaking your foot?" And the host was like, "She's a there's only." four people in the room at this point it's like a very small group the host is like and these she's allowed to shake her foot a bizarre like, comment i'm that's a, not that's saying a she's not allowed to i'm asking her if she will stop there's, there's no like, tension oh, oh, remember yeah. guys i was told by a chatter last week there were people telling me last time there's no tension in these podcasts laugh does not want to fuck this guy <laughs> yeah i'll stop that's okay i'll stop and it was like very awkward. And then he afterward he was like, "Okay, listen. Um, I don't think it's okay for you to say to like threaten to kill yourself during your share." 
I was like, okay, I don't think me saying I want to slip my wrist in front of the YouTube building constitutes like me. I'm not, it's not like I'm saying like you guys, like, I don't know if I'm going to live anymore. Like, I'm just, I'm, uh, it's a fucking creative writing group. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm That's what you creatively said? expressing. Because you should have said, well, now I want to do it here. Yes. No, I did. I did. This, is, this is what I said. I didn't. Okay. This is giving me flashbacks to Mr. Girl's story about breaking a window over an argument with his girlfriend about hot dogs on pizza. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. <laughs> What did he do? He like shook the curtains or some shit and like smashed through the, smashed the window or some shit. I can't remember. Okay. And didn't, didn't say what your suggestion suggestion is. And then, uh, and then he was like, also like, um, everyone here has to. Ha it's like a safe space where people are allowed to shake their feet. I was like, okay, I don't think it's reasonable for Shaylin and I to like pause our relationship where we're constantly getting annoyed with each other uh for the group like i it can't dominate the group i totally understand but like if one of us is annoying the other i think that we're gonna have to still be able to be like hey stop doing that um and he said later he was like during that conversation about like your share and about shaylin i thought you might like hit me or something like i didn't feel <laughs> safe with you in my house <laughs> i was like dude what like i will i'm i'm what are you talking about like i will if you, do you want me to leave your house we can leave i'll leave at any time i'm you're, like what do you i don't understand you're like i feel like he racially profiled you yeah i guess i don't know it was really weird and then um so then things were like tense for a while and then i did a my last share of the last meeting of the group oh, no. i was like i was like so when I was a kid, I thought I was like really smart. Okay, so so that was just the lead up. So that was just the that was the first one. That's why he says, "Hey, I can't pause my relationship for your group. Uh, if if Shaylin's being annoying, I'm gonna have to tell her she's being annoying." And the guy's like, "I don't feel safe with you in my home." So what? How does the final one go? Okay. <laughs> And then as I got older, I started thinking like, I guess I'm not, I think I may be like 20% smarter than other people. But lately with this physics stuff and like talking to chat GPT, I've realized I'm like 200% as smart as everybody else around me. I realized I, people can't understand what I'm saying because they're stupid. No one around okay, me can thanks. understand what I'm talking about because I'm just like incredibly smart. And I'm just finally realizing that I'm act just actually a literal genius. So I yeah, realized I'm like, I guess I'm not, I think I may be like 20%. I was like chair of the last meeting of the group. I was like, I was like, so when I was a kid, I thought I was like really smart. And then as I got older, I started thinking like, I guess I'm not, I think I may be like 20% smarter than other people. But lately with this physics stuff and like talking to chat GPT, I've realized I'm like 200% as smart as everybody else around me. I realized I, people. He's so real. This is so base. People can't understand what I'm saying because they're stupid. No one around me can understand what I'm talking about because I'm just like True. incredibly smart. True. And I'm just finally realizing yes. that I'm just I mean, actually a yes. literal genius. I just like I just like went on like a megalomaniacal rant and just yes, like he's faster right. and he's faster right. and faster You're and louder. You're so smart about, that you like, can easily just conjure words out of thin air and right. say them with one, with one try. <laughs> hey, there's different types of intelligence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, Leah. Yeah. yeah, so then... So then he was like, well, I, th I think this is narcissistic. Certainly. Most certainly. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I was like, I don't. A lot of geniuses are narcissistic, though. You, you'd you have well, to I was like, I was like, this is supposed to be my share. <laughs> why are you telling me? Why are you calling me narcissistic during my. Also, like, for, also, like, obviously, I know it's narcissistic. Can you hear this stuff I'm saying? Like, I'm self-aware. I know what I'm saying. I, I, I told you I'm really smart. I'm smart. I <laughs> This is me. This is actually me. This is me. This is my. He's describing my internal thought process. I'm just like so much smarter than everyone else. Well, I'm not really because like I'm self aware because I'm so smart. I know I'm not actually smart than everyone. But I, that makes me smarter than everyone else. Dude, so real. I can I'm hear than what you. I'm saying yeah, better yeah. than you can hear what I'm yeah. saying. Um. Yeah. And I was like, you. He was like, I didn't call you. He was like, well, I just said what you're saying sounded narcissistic. I'm not saying <laughs> you're narcissistic. And I was like, don't fucking... Do if you're going to be an asshole, just be an asshole. This like, is so real. This goes so hard. insult me during my vulnerable share time and then <laughs> tell me it didn't happen. Like, what Dude. is your problem? Why, are you, why do you do this all the time? And he was like, all right, I think I don't want you in the group anymore. Um, Shaylin, is that okay with you? 
and she was like what no no like she thought he was she he thought she was gonna be like yes finally <laughs> which is a big problem that keeps happening to us where people think that she she's like, like Milani, where like people think that she secretly <laughs> is on their side and she's just not yeah and so yeah uh yeah she was like no and then he and then he was like also again at this point we we're like half of the there's a few other people in the group but like they weren't there so it was just half, well, half so the group and he's like right, well, i'm right. leaving i'm leaving my own group and he just like got up and like stormed out of a coffee shop well thank you so much so today's topic is race he won i mean he won he just won why was he interrupting, Mr. Girl? It was his share time. Do you not want him to share? The the point is to The point is to share. That's what he was thinking about. He was thinking about how smart he was. Do you want him to lie? If it if it was the lying time, you should call it the lying time, not the sharing time. No? And uh the N-word. And I want to make sure that I um, go at this, that we go at this more so, yeah. um, that we go at this topic with um, soft and firm hands mm -hmm. and that we're being respectful uh, to all the people who will threaten to, to kill us. <laughs> Did you say respectful? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to start off by uh, reading a tweet that I wrote the other day that, that got a lot of people into tizzy and trigger warning, N word incoming. Um, okay. Wait, oh my god, I have to find it. Hold on. I literally, I'm so retarded, I X'd out of the fucking thing. Okay, hold on. Do you want to tell another story where you, like, hit Shaylin while I look for this? Oh, the Bo Blacks clip, you mean? One minute, have I got it? Do I have it? I do. I've got it on hand, you're lucky. Alright, oh right. Bo Blacks, explain, then we're gonna go into interjections, because okay. Moth and Glink want to get in, and I want to okay. give them a chance. I'll say, two more, I'll say two more things, and then I'll give Moth and Glink time, because I'm respectful. Alright. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, this welcome. is, yeah, this whole you're conversation is so respectful of you. Mute that motherfucker! Mute that motherfucker! Oh my uh, god. Bo Black. So good, um, man. I've never actually hit Shaylin. Okay. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy because they're they're just they're just some people who deserve it. <laughs> Wait, sorry, how did we get to the other words with the N-word? What? So retarded I X'd out of N uh reading a tweet that I wrote the other day that, that got a lot of people into Tizzy and trigger warning. N-word incoming. Um Wait, oh my god, I have to find it. Hold on, I literally- I'm so retarded I X'd out of the fucking thing. Okay, hold on. Do you want to tell another story where you, like, hit Shaylin while I look for this? Um, I've never actually hit Shaylin. Okay. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy, because they're- they're just- they're just some people who deserve it. And Shaylin's one of those people. <laughs> no, she's most certainly not. Okay. So my tweet. Okay, 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 trigger warning, trigger warning. You've been warned. Turn back. There's no turning back. Danger, danger. Okay. This is my tweet. Nothing happens when you say never. Nobody gets hurt. Uh, hey. Nobody dies. It's a word. Virtue signaling against an artifact of speech is weakness. I'm not going to live in a world where I'm scared to make a noise with my mouth. Slurs are just lip movements. If you're hurt by them, you should get a more challenging job. Or acknowledge what an actual adversity is. Every race has a slur, and they're all kind of funny. Call me a honky or a cuck. I will laugh. Jesus. Laugh with your friends and stop signaling a competition of who the most pure being is on the earth. Context matters. Grow up. Take the liberal social media brainworm out of your head with some good tweezers. You will be happier. I mean, what? Well, yeah, it's. I obviously agree with it, but it's not exactly a hard take to give, is it? So, what do you think about this, Max? Well, I disagree with you on a few levels. But first of all, I want to ask: Do you think that your claim is undercut by your trigger warnings? <laughs> okay, let's see what Mister Girl's other angle this is going to be. Let's see. <laughs> um, perhaps. Okay. Yes. Yes. What? There were trigger warnings. Okay. But I want to make sure that um, people at least had a head start on sharpening the pitchfork, I guess. Okay. Because you said nothing happens, but then you give you give warnings as though something maybe does happen. Um, yeah, I guess something could happen to me. <laughs> okay, this is dishonest. You you gave gay little trigger warnings. Now you're trying to act like it was you were giving them a head start and sharpening a pitchfork. Okay, that's what happens when you say that. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean that is that is one of the, the good arguments. people like Leah get hurt. Yeah, really. Fa I mean, fantastic people like like me. Um, what, do you, what do you disagree with? 
Oh, a few things. Okay. Um, there's a close connection of the N-word to violence. And so when someone has done violence to you or your family and said a word while they did it, and then someone else says that word, it feels like a threat to people, I think. And then also... Well, the let normal me clarify. Is I still think that if you're using it as a derogative uh, racist term, that's still not okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think you should go out of your way to racially disrespect people or disrespect people in general. Um, okay. But I think uh, through a hundred years at least, um, the N-word has turned into something completely different. It's, it's unlike any slur in that it's been normalized and used in a thousand different ways. Um, there's a, a hundred different contexts you can use it in. Um, it's not always just a pejorative. It's not always just a racial slur. Um, well, it is always, I guess, a racial slur, but it's not always just a <laughs> racial slur. Um, so this is this is my this is my um, opinion is that if it's in the right context, it should be okay, just like any language is. Just like if you call uh, your like best friend like a stupid bitch, you're not gonna walk up to a random stranger or like um like a person with Down syndrome and call them a stupid bitch. It's different when you do that, but when you call your friend a stupid bitch, it's different. Mm hmm. But. Um, yeah, obviously there's context in which people think the word is fine, like when black people say it or say it to each other or say it in rap songs. But um, it feels like you're arguing that the word itself shouldn't have any inherent emotional power. Yeah, of course I believe that. But I think that the power of the word is that it's imbued with violence and that that's why it's said irreverently in rap songs because, because it's imbued with well, violence. Well, it's mostly said irreverently. So, the, like, I, I don't know if you agree with this. I think that just through life experience, I think that I've heard it maybe maybe 1% of the time it's used. I think it's uh, like an... I like how people still use trigger warnings when they've basically been proven to actually trigger people more than the triggering content does because it primes them to be alert and stressed. I haven't seen that, but that sounds right. <clears throat> I just always felt like they were dumb because it's like you, you, you're not going to have trigger warnings on everything in the world. So you should learn to function in the world when these topics are going to come up by surprise you, that you should learn to interface with things in a way where you're not going to totally break down if one of these topics is raised because you, you simply cannot control every environment yeah and they've done studies on it and it basically causes people to be on the lookout for triggering thing okay well fair enough an actual racial slur like someone trying to hurt someone's feelings for being black one percent of the time these days i think the other 99 percent is very blase very like it's it's i don't think it's um used to harm i don't think it's even referencing uh like the dark sort of history of black america i i think it's just it's become its own thing entirely and the same what way that queer, DSA meeting, exactly. queer used yeah. to be like i mean in the 90s if you were called a queer there's there's a lot different than if you're like i'm queer now you're sure, queer black people have not claimed the n-word as a label oh they, they definitely sure. don't want you yeah they don't want you to refer to them not yet actually okay. i think some have I've seen a few episodes of Atlanta, and I feel like they, they make it clear. <laughs> Dude. She drives me fucking nuts, bro. That, that, she's just so annoying. I know she's joking, but it's like such an annoying joke. I've seen a few episodes of Atlanta. I try to fucking... <laughs> Jesus. Black people be like, sorry, it's not African-American. I need you to call me a... <laughs> yeah, not, not like that. I'll get offended if you don't call me a... Yeah, no, I don't. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, like I'm like. That's that's not the same though. No, sure. I still the N word carries many. Um, You're clearly styles. talking about the hard R in your tweet. Sure, but I just think the N word in general. Okay, I don't. I've not seen people identify as the hard R as a label they want <laughs> sure, to be called. Sure, it sure. seems like a word they really don't, don't, I don't want. Think to... it's, so part of the reason why uh, this word is so loaded is because of the trauma attached to it, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is that it's it's connected to violence, and that it's not just like calling someone a. I mean, maybe a bitch is a little more like that because that's also connected to violence. Yeah. So is I mean, horror. So is um, mm -hmm. I mean, there's plenty of other ones that people use. Fat people use that all the time. Uh, people don't identify as a fat. People are still saying it, um, and it's it's different. And also, I don't know. I, I had a talk with no people. Do there are definitely gay people who call themselves that? No. Someone where I was like, if like not all black people can use the word either. Like Africans who have no ties to American slavery can't use it because that's not it's like another word to claim. It's very interesting how like. Even I've seen even discourse on like black Twitter about that. And then it's like, okay, surely this is just my opinion about the N word is that nobody genuinely cares. I've never met a black person who genuinely cares ever. And I grew up around plenty of black people. We, I grew up very racially integrated um, with Mexicans and, and black people and maybe a couple white people. And um, at least in my friend group at the very least. And people were just saying 
it every other word in the way that you do when you're in middle school and in from the inner city. And I think that uh, that's led me to believe that very few, and even meeting adults, black people now, um, in places like maybe Discord, but maybe that's you know a little different than the average black population, I guess. But still, every black Probably. person, that, yeah, every black person that I've ever met doesn't actually have like an emotional response to this word. Just like I don't, I mean, do you have an emotional response to cake? Yeah. I don't at all. Yeah. I think because I think I've, that racism is a disease of the like I think that you're mentally ill and diseased if you're racist. So I'm like I have, if a, you use I have an emotional response to. Nigger. Oh, interesting. Probably stronger than my response to. Cake. Interesting. Uh, okay, we missed one there. Okay, that's fine. Why do you think that is? Actually, bug, let me just, let me... bug. Yeah. <laughs> How far are that way? Let me finish my thought. What I was going to say is because I think that there's no meaningful social programs that have directly assessed. So uh, 17 minutes, America, 45 into the video, problems, roughly. Because it's racist to talk about those problems, or it, uncouth to talk about those problems, like the black crime rate or the single motherhood rate in black communities. Um, because we've been unable to assess that with something like reparations, where we can make this community stronger and, and um, make up for a lot of lost time. Uh, one of the only ways that black people feel that they can exhibit power is through social coercion, um, which in this case, I think, becomes the N-word. You mean guilt tripping? Not even guilt tripping. I think to some extent um, policing. Because it's guilt tripping, but it's also, it can be very violent. Like, I don't know if you saw how many people were, like, um, threatening to, like, hurt me or um, kill me, but it was quite a few people. I got an emotional it, response because it was hitting my wallet, John. Just okay. that tweet, and I wasn't Don't read too it. much into that. I wouldn't use, I would never call a black person in my life. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even something that I think, like, I would ever do. Um, at least in that in that way. I've said awful things to my friends, just that they've said awful things to me for a laugh. But I would never, um, in a bigoted way, say that. Uh, but even just referencing the word there is enough mm -hmm. to elicit a very um, police response online, which I understand. <laughs> well, it sounds like you think it's fake. So I, d I think to some degree, at least, yeah, it t at least to some degree it is. Well, you're saying you don't think any black people are offended by that word. So that sounds like you're saying it's entirely fake, unless you are overstating your position there. Even if I think you are offended by the word, I think it's very removed. I, I, I don't think that it's um, ever present in your life. And I don't think like you want to, like, I, I think it's annoying um, if you hear a white person say it to like a rap song or like uh, say it in a video game, like while you're playing a Call of Duty lobby. Like I don't think that, and I think that that's also different, that elicits a different response than going up to a black person as a racist and calling them a nigger, yeah. Like I don't think that anyone cares if a white person raps the n-word. I don't, I, like I don't think anyone cares about that. I don't think really people care in a Call of Duty lobby. Okay, but in your tweet, you're not rapping the N word. You're saying yeah, nothing I'm, happens when you I, when well, you say. Well, nothing does. Like n nobody, no, nobody is physically is physically harmed. I'm saying that you have the choice whether or not to be. Nobody's physically harmed if you wave a gun around in a hotel. Yeah, that's <laughs> different than saying a slur. I understand. I'm just saying physical harm is not. No one's saying but they're physically have, harmed by the, the word. But you have a choice to respond to a word where you don't have really a choice to respond to someone physically um, threatening you. Like there's there's more of a, there's more true. of a choice and power there. What you no. I, Are we talking about what are they talking about? They said emotional response. Why aren't they talking about having an emotional response when they say respond? That's not, I don't think you have a choice over emotional responses, really. It's sort of like a reflexive thing, though. How you act on that emotional response, yeah, you can exert control over that. But the, the, I, I don't believe that you can just not have an emotional response to something you would other, otherwise have an emotional response to. Or maybe, let's try this again or like uh, say it in a video game like while you're playing a call of duty lobby like i don't think that and i think that that's also different that elicits a different response than going up to a black person as a racist and calling them an area like i don't think that anyone cares if a white person raps the n-word i don't I, like i don't think anyone cares about that i don't think really people care in a call of duty lobby okay but in your tweet you're not rapping the n-word you're saying yeah, nothing I'm, happens when you, I, when well, you nothing say does. like n nobody n nobody is physically is physically harmed. I'm saying that you have the choice whether or not to be. Nobody's physically harmed if you wave a gun around. In a no, you don't have the. I don't believe people have a have a choice to to have an emotional response on it. I think you you can get you will get offended if you're going to get offended by something. You're going to get offended by it. That's just a that's like a description of an emotional response. It's the expression of that or the attempt to stop the person saying it or something like that where, where we would start taking issue with it it's fine to have a feeling about something and you will have feelings about things without control things just happen yeah wait okay so yes this is the ancient stoic yeah okay your initial reaction is involuntary not something you can control but how you choose that yeah sure a hotel <laughs> yeah, that's different than saying a slur i understand that. i'm just saying physical harm is not, no one's saying but they're you physically harmed by the word. But you have a choice to respond to a word where you don't have really a choice to respond to someone physically um, threatening you. No, you have a... 
you have no choice over your internal response over the, how that how that makes you feel. You have no choice over that, but you have a choice over the the response to that feeling, how you act. In both cases, like if you're getting assaulted, there are many different ways you can act, right? Like there's there's more of a, there's more true. of a choice and power there. You're just being stupid. No. Of course, there's more of a choice. In the same way where I don't, I don't care if someone calls me a like what is that? Or someone called me a wetback? Who cares? I don't think you can choose how you feel. Okay. <laughs> I think that's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. It, it, even even just you can't choose how you feel. Why don't you just be happy? You can do that. Why don't you do it then? I have done it. Why don't you do it all the time? I do it whenever I think about it. Yeah. No, no. Why don't you just always float through life euphoric? Why would you ever have? That's not have the same thing as going? making distinct choices in distinct moments. So when you you can't turn on something in your brain that makes you happy, but you can make distinct choices when given uh, feedback or sure. by given yep. um. A stimulus to yep. react in a way that you deem appropriate, in a way that serves you, in a way that makes you. But what are the choices you can based make on? Choices like, oh, I want to be happier. I'm going to go out in the sun more, and I'm going to go but exercise. Is, like that's, that's that choice? a choice to be happy. Okay, so yeah, I agree with her there, but she's conflated emotional response with, with action, and I don't think those are the same thing. What is that choice based on? Like, it's your choice is based on an, a non-voluntary thing. Like, eventually, if I keep asking you, well, what's this based on? What's this based on? Eventually, you're gonna have to say. Well, you do have a reaction to what's happening that you can't control, and then you can control something after that. Sure. But the idea that you could, okay, but the idea that you could entirely control your reaction to everything that's happening around you. Sure, let's I say mean, we can control secondary emotions or at least your actions. Okay, then that I think. At, and then my argument would come in that I think that to be and <laughs> you don't. I don't know if you'll agree with me. I mean, I just don't understand how she hadn't thought this part through beforehand. But I think to be fully okay. racially integrated, we should be able to use the same language as everyone. Like, I think that white people distinctly not being able to say um, the N-word or rap along to songs or to call I, their friend. What uh, do you mean by be able to? Like, it's legal. You well, mean people course, should have the same emotional reaction to it? Yeah. But how does that translate to being able to? Like, you're able to say, you've, you've made a tweet, no, you didn't you know, get banned. No, you know what nothing. I mean. I, I think no, that... I don't know what you mean, because you're allowed to say you're an upset black people. You're no, allowed to offend black people. No, I know. You're allowed to call black people a nigger if you want to. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Don't I know it? <laughs> I know it. Well, I'm just saying that. Uh, I'm no, just but saying... you obviously know what I. You obviously know what I mean, which is. Oh that no, I'm saying that. Be... I think they're making an implication that, that you're not allowed to offend black people, but you are. You can make black people really mad if you want to, and there's not in America. There's not much they can do about it. Sure, but, but what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is that there should be a reframing of the way that we think of this word because it does more harm than good. So what I was just about to say. Yeah, but, hold but on, let me finish. Make, so what I was about make, to say is that sense. when you have a, a a a bad word that every single person says that I have never met one person who has not said in in my fucking life, black or white, mm -hmm. Mexican. Every single person says this. One, you have to go into hiding to say that, and, and, and virtue signal to say, oh, I've never said this before. Or you have to go into, into um, you have to deny that anyone has said this and we can just pretend that there are people who haven't said this word. And also there is um, the reality that there should be, uh, that there's social currency attached to moral purity, especially when it comes to race relations or words that you should say. And so now uh -huh. we have this population who um, can basically do anything that they want, say any racial slur ever, black people. And this uh, population that's not allowed to partake in this at all, what that creates instead of um, like a sensitive society that's like race conscious in a positive way, that becomes a society that's very race conscious in a negative divisive way. Because they're seen, you, there's a very clear distinction between one group and the other. And I, I think, I think if you, if a black person mm. was in a friend group or if a black person was uh, made themselves or was okay with being uncomfortable with their- I mean, it is true that black people are essentially permitted by uh, like white progressives to engage in like every form of bigotry under the sun. Like it's just- Let's let's just forget about the fact they don't like trans people. Let's just forget about all the homophobia. Let's forget about the misogyny. Unless it's black women, then they stop hyping up about misogyny. Let's forget about all that shit. Also, they're allowed to say the N-word. So it's like, yeah, that it's basically just free reign to say whatever the fuck they want. To a, to a like, white progressive. To a white progressive, obviously. I don't know that it's the case for every group's view. But that is something how they look at it. Their white friend... Uh, rapping uh, uncomfortably, listening to their friend uh, rap um, a Kendrick Lamar I accept song. the Jays. I think that 20 years from now, we will be in a much more racially integrated society than if we don't do that. I think there's a big logical flaw in the foundation of what you're saying. Where you're saying there's this like weird loop. Where you well, say actually, no, that's even changed now. That's even changed now because as long as they back it with like a bit of pro Palestine, it's fine now. Hey, I should be allowed to offend people, but they shouldn't be offended by the offensive thing I want to say, which then implies that actually you don't no, think you, you should can be, be allowed. offended. I think the secondary action is what matters. So it's how you react to being offended because I think yeah, that you're, you can. You're I think that it is. It is I, get, I get what you're. I get what you're saying. To let yourself be, to like, have your reaction, but to react. I, I understand what you're saying. I, I understand what you're saying. I'm telling black people what to do. 
that's fine. But I'm saying that I'm not, I'm not offended by what you're saying. I'm saying it doesn't make sense. Okay. And here's where I think the logic breaks down. Okay. You're saying we should be allowed to say this word. And what you really mean by that is that people shouldn't get really upset by it. Or that there should be social consequences. Yeah. The combination of these two ideas. I'm not saying it's a positive thing. I'm saying, in, no, I'm not even saying that it's a neutral thing and that there should be an absence of action. I'm saying yeah. that it would be a positive thing to do this. I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> I get okay, what you're saying. But there are people watching but, this who might not understand what I'm saying, so I'm clarifying. Okay. Can I clarify what I'm saying? Sure. Okay. I don't think what you're saying makes sense for the following reason. Okay. You're saying two things that I think are logically inconsistent. One is that you should be allowed to say things that upset people. Yeah. And the other, the other is that they shouldn't get upset. And the conclusion is that you think that you're not allowed to upset people and that the way for us to be allowed to use the n-word would be for people to stop getting upset but then that leads to this weird utopia where yeah we're allowed to say whatever we want and it doesn't ups it doesn't upset anybody but then i don't think that's what i'm saying so let me clarify but then, well, why does our why does, wait, wait, why does our freedom of being able to say what we want need to rely on other people not being upset about it so that's so that's a different okay so i know where you're coming from but i'm saying so that one there's not I obviously think that, like, if we're talking like First Amendment law wise, you should be able to offend anyone. What was that jump? Oh, was that a. Was but I'm talking about like a, a social, um, social laws. Or at least yeah, but I'm saying. Like but I don't finish. get what a. So well, I want you to address specifically what does it mean to socially be not allowed to do something versus socially it just upsets people a lot? This Okay, so this is the argument that I'm making. I think that it is for the greater good that black people let themselves be uncomfortable for a couple years with white people adopting their language. Mm -hmm. But calling someone a. That's isn't my adopting point. their language that black people don't call each other well they do okay i Not missed like it i miss i missed one 29 minutes 29 minutes let me note these down do i've, I've seen it my whole life they do it's not good but i don't know why you're saying that they don't you're saying you're saying like nick, give, like nick give me my give me my water bottle like they say that but they're not like man you're a fucking i don't ever want to see you on my property again they don't say no, that but i'm not saying that white people should be allowed to do that either but that is the n-word that people are offended by. You're so, okay, no, so are you, not, are you saying no, no, that no, all hold of this? On, hold on, hold on, Because that's not true. But so in your tweet, you, you said N-I-G-G-E-R. When you say yes. her with an E-R, people about, are... I'm talking about all, all uh, under the <laughs> umbrella. There are multiple versions. All right, the final miss is... There's one missed n-word. Uh, 3357. 3357, got you. I understand okay. that, that, but word. this is like a Mott and Bailey thing where you're like, I should be able to say and no one should react. And you're like, and people are like, well, that's really offensive. And you're like, what are you talking about? You say, hey, Nico, what's up? What's the difference? They're all under the same umbrella, but they're not the same. One well, is why like- Why are you acting like I haven't already clarified? This is a problem. Because one, I've already said, you should not be able to just uh, uh, inconsequentially walk up to someone and call them a racial slur. I don't know what you mean by be able, because you keep saying you should be allowed to do this. You shouldn't, you're not allowed to do this. You are allowed to do this. People get Okay, why don't you let me talk? I don't know what you, because I don't know what you mean. I, okay, I want, so I want you to clarify then. Because I you're think not there should thing. be. Yes, I am. Well, because okay. you won't let me talk. Okay. This is kind of true. Okay, I'm. I'm with Mr. Girl here. I'm with Mr. Girl. I, I mean, okay. I think that there should be social consequences. Hearing it spelled out like that hit different. It did. Consequences it's... for being a racist. For for okay. for for doing something that clearly exhibits that you harbor white supremacy, or racial okay. or, or or racial animosity. There should okay. be consequences for that. I do not think. Can you, that it can is you tell clear. me what you mean by that? I don't know what you mean when you're talking about. To walk about... up to someone. To, if no, I no, was, no, no. I, I know what I know what you mean by animosity. I don't know what you mean by social. Tell me the difference between the following things: okay. people getting mad, social consequences, not being allowed people to say something. People getting mad is social consequences. Losing your job is okay. social consequences. Not being allowed to say something, or being allowed to say something. These. I feel like I don't know what you mean by these different things. I don't know what you don't get. I can't see you. All right, I'm gonna leave the call and come back so I can see you. Okay, I can see. It. Uh, what I don't get, I if you're not allowed to make people mad, then I don't know what it means to be allowed to say something that makes people mad. I just, okay. so I, I, okay, I just, re I reject this? the you're whole like anti. You're allowed to get okay. people mad. Okay. And also, you should be allowed to discuss this the way that I am. Okay. Uh, but you, but you and, people, are and, people should, and people should listen to you, and people should listen because <laughs> I'm smart. Um, no, I just think that. Uh, no, but, no, I think this is kind of falling apart. I, I think saying stuff like you shouldn't lose your job. That makes sense. You can you can say that's a prescription. That's a prescription that makes sense. You should not lose your job for saying the N word outside of your job, obviously. Um, yeah, like there's specific pre prescriptions like that you can make. But Lav just saying you should be able to, but it's also fine that people get upset. It's like, well, the only thing stopping you from saying it because you don't have a job, Lav. You're still on Twitter. You're not banned from anywhere. You're still saying this shit. How are you? How are you not able to say it? How, who's stopping you from saying it? 
you just want you want to control other people's emotional reactions and tell them not to get upset by you saying that. But you can't really do that. <laughs> right now, especially, maybe it's a generational thing. In my generation, it is seen as this is a forbidden, no, no, something. There's there's no space to talk about it. This is not something you say. I understand that it's a social faux pas, why... but in that people say you're not allowed to, but you're, you actually are, you are... What are you getting? That yeah, you are yeah, conflating yeah. making people this mad kind of and not being allowed to do something. I don't, okay. and, I, and I, I reject don't, this. I reject this. I don't think this, you should oh, be mad. I anyone should be mad at using the word... There are two things that you need to... In a lot of contexts. Okay, you should, black people shouldn't get mad when you say you You said that. And... Yes. Unless you're saying it with animosity. And... Right. Now this sure. is... You should be allowed to do that. She's screaming at me. Do okay. you hear her? No. Oh, she's nice yelling. Cat. But the, what, you, what I'm saying you haven't connected, and I feel oh. that a lot of anti-woke people do this, where they say, you're not allowed to do this anymore, you're not... And they'll, they'll, then they'll usually say something that actually you are allowed to do. And then... And, or they haven't defined what it means to not be allowed to do something. So does it mean you have hired from your job? You I've already from a said, I've, I've literally already clarified this, that there should be no, people should not get mad. I've already, I've already said this. People should not get mad at people for saying the N-word. That is my claim. But, but if people do get mad, does that mean you're not allowed to? Because you're like, in my generation, people think you're not There's allowed to talk about this. But, but people so you're thinking doing you're not allowed to- now where you're like, should they not be allowed to be? No, I'm just saying the opinion that I think that you should not, one, threaten violence over someone. I think that it is worse to threaten violence <laughs> on someone cat. than it is to say- In, in <laughs> most contexts- Jeez, okay, I don't fuck, think fuck, 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 I lost track of where we were. I lost track, totally. That's fine. Look, we've already. I was just focusing on the cat. I think that um, people should uh, allow it to affect their life in any significant way. Um, and I think that we should um, normalize and okay and, and get on board with the idea of full racial integration. And that means language. That means adopting each other's language. So, in okay. the same way that, that black people can say, gee willikers, um, white people can start rapping in the Kendrick Lamar song. I don't know what okay, you're not that understanding. That was another one! What I don't understand is how the concepts of being allowed to do something and making people mad when you do it are related to each other. I don't get if you're saying, because it sounds like sometimes okay, you're saying I've you're not already, allowed to do Max, you're actually making, like, <laughs> I've hmm? already said everyone is literally allowed yeah. to even be racist in America. You are literally yeah. allowed to go to a black person. She, she's got to think through this more. She hasn't thought through this position enough. She's got to think through about what exactly she's saying about a, a black person's emotional. Like, how is a black person supposed to respond? Let's... And tell them that they're in a contentious way. I, you are allowed like, to do that. That's what true. do you think is going yet, on? I'm talking about also... social steering. Yes. Social should, steering. I believe it... that there is a separate law. Lav, you've said what you're saying. Max, Mr. Girl needs to get his point out now, his counterpoint. That we all um, impose on each other. Yes. With anger and outrage. Yes. yes. And some of that what is I'm good what and I'm positive. And I acknowledge that. So some what social steering. Shut the fuck up. Some okay. social steering is good and positive. Mm -hmm. I'm making the okay. argument that fighting about racial slurs is not as good and positive, and actually it keeps us more divisive. Okay, this is better. What I'm concerned about is a moving goalpost for what constitutes socially not being allowed to do something, where sometimes of people are just mad. that's a moving goalpost. In your definition. So sometimes you'll say, I'm, you're allowed to do this, and people are allowed to get mad, and that's okay for them to get mad. And then other times you'll say, well, if they get mad, it means I'm not allowed to do this. So by getting mad, you're actually imposing, restrict, you're policing me. Now you're controlling me by getting mad. And so I don't understand when black anger or outrage or being offended is them policing or them just expressing themselves because I, I feel like the stance you're moving well, you towards is yourself and still be yeah exactly it's about she's got to draw hard positions or sort of like oh here are the things i think should happen to you should be able to happen to you like oh if someone wants to reply to you on twitter and say you're a piece of shit for saying the n-word makes total sense they would do that but but then if it's like, oh, you're going to lose your job for saying the N-word on Twitter. It's like, okay, well, now that's a problem. Like, she needs to have harder thoughts on what exactly can be done and why. Wrong. As well. But now, I know, but I I'm think specifically with, I think talking about what you, label, what you label as controlling behavior. Okay, I believe that the yeah. phenomenon that's happening is mm -hmm. imposed even on black people with one another. I believe that there are black people who really don't care and act like they do care because of what is imposed on them. I'm trying to break down the barrier. I'm trying to get people to think more and break down the barrier okay, and decide. Now what she's saying keeps changing. What is okay, okay for their friend group and maybe make a choice. So I already exist in friend groups where black people don't care. So this affects my life very little unless I talk about it on Twitter. Okay. But my hope is that people listen to this and say, she has a point. And I think that this probably would help with racial integration. So maybe I'll allow my white person to say the N-word. Or maybe a white person will be when um, you say allow, scared of the N-word. When you say allow there, that's what I'm really laser focused on. When you, okay, when that you black are person being saying, autistic. You know when, what I mean? And everyone knows what I mean. No, I literally don't know what you mean because you're saying two things that have opposite meanings. So allowing, are you so saying the opposite? So what I believe is allowing. Let me give you an example of what I think is allowing. Yeah, give me an example of allowing versus not allowing. What is the black listener who yeah, says, I'm go, going to allow go, my friends to say the N-word. What are they going to saying, do different? 
What are they going to do differently that means they're now allowing us? They're going to tell their, their close white friend, their best little yeah. white friend, their pet, yeah. their white pet. Yeah. Um, you know what? I don't care if you say the N-word and I actually... Uh, or let's maybe maybe you're experimental. Maybe you say, let's try it. Let's try something crazy. You say the N-word and I, and I do a, a body check and I see what my reaction is. And if it is truly of offense, if I truly feel uncomfortable with you saying it, I don't want you to say that anymore. But if I think it's kind of funny, and I think if it brings us closer to each other yeah. to adopt each other's culture in some way, or at least language in this way, I think I might persist with this. I think that this would actually probably make us more integrated, and it would make us less divided. Okay. It, would, it would feel like we are more the same, and maybe we are not so different. And uh, it's fun. We feel closer to each other than ever. Because what, what, okay. I, what I believe Wait, is that... Can you, can, we, can, we, can, you, can we loop this back to what yeah. you mean by allow then? Because you're saying the black person can say, okay, I'll allow this. And when I ask you what you meant... Okay, so you you're just word policing me. What word would you rather I use, Max? I want to finish what I'm saying because I think this is an important part of this discussion. I think any black person listening to this is going to probably bristle every time you say the word allow. And I want to I want to kind of tease out what it is that you're thinking when you say that. So your response was that allowing it means a black person is going to check with themselves. Am I actually upset about this? Or have, do I just have the woke mind virus? And if it turns out that they just had the woke mind Oh, that is a great point. I haven't showed in a while. Guys, we have 70 likes for 230 viewers. That's, that's pretty crazy, guys. That's a huge discrepancy right now, guys, okay? So if you wouldn't mind not being freeloaders, and please, like in the stream. If you want to take it further, you can subscribe to the channel, donate, buy a membership, gift a membership, buy a super chat, if you can. You can join the Discord, discord.gg slash Gleeman. Go to twitter.com slash Gleeman. Open your wallets, open your hearts. Like the stream, like the stream. I don't woke my virus, they just thought they were upset, but they're not really. Bodily, they're not upset. Then they'll say, okay, I'm not and upset. And that means you Am I, what if, am I doing this because my, am I not allowing this because my other black friends, maybe the woke mind virus, or my other black friends are holding uh, my own political views hostage? Back. They're holding me back. Okay. Yeah. So, the, so what if the black person, and you're saying if the black person pressure? consults, if they consult their feelings and they think, oh, you know what? I actually am offended by this. Then they should, you're actually telling them to then tell their white friend not to say this. They're actually telling them to police their white friend. Sure. Okay. But, okay. So then it feels like you are not, it sounds like you're, then you're never advocating for white people saying the N word in any situation where it offends a black friend, if the black friend is truly offended. And what you're really saying is black people should check. You gotta make sure you're actually offended when you claim you're offended, because if you claim you're offended when you're not really offended, That's part of it. you're, I'm being, also a, selling the you're idea being a little that... fucking black pussy, then- No, I'm also selling the idea that it, could, it, it is a positive for racial integration. So I'm saying it would behoove a black person. This video will be sent out to freelance N-word auditors on Fiverr, so Queen is gonna make his money back on this one. Since you also have the reaction that I'm spelling out. Okay, but your advice is just for them to check if they are. Uh, as a starting point, yeah, absolutely. Nerd Angle okay. Super Chatted $4.99. <laughs> Donate because Zwino Kuhn and ain't getting this monetized. Listen, I, I believe. I believe in the monetization. Okay, look, all the other Mystical podcasts have been monetized. One of them did get briefly demonetized. Well, not demonetized, got limited. But then it got put back. It got put back to full monetization. I believe. I have faith. I've sent Bug all the timestamps. We should be fine. We should be fine. Thank you for the $4.99. What's step two? So let's say let's say they fail the first test and they say, you know what, this actually does offend me. <laughs> they tell their white friend, uh, hey, I actually really don't like it. I don't feel comfortable with you co-opting my language. I don't want you to use it as a slur. I don't want you to use it to mean dude. I don't want you to use it as a funny insult. Well, and then I would ask, um, yeah, why what's do the next you, step in the, in the reform? Why do you, uh, or is there a way that you Yo, can, quack, thank you for the 10 gifted. Can detach um, from what you feel is victimhood from your racial identity. I think that that's the next question. So if I were to talk to a black person, they say, no, I actually am offended by the, by, the, by the nigger word. I would say, okay, is there a way that you could potentially detach from what you think is, uh, what you perceive as a blood libel against your ancestry? Um, and if they say, yes, I could detach from that, or, I, or I'd like to maybe, after you, you, after you um, be, because I think ultimately my point there would be, I, I think that what's keeping a lot of America from integrating in, like a, in, in a big way is the way that we have identified with our victimhood. I think that's a lot of why I don't care um, about someone calling me a cuck or a wetback because I, I don't feel any sort of um, kinship to my oppression. My grandmother was born on a on a plantation. Like I'm only I'm only two generations removed from slavery. Um, I still don't. That <laughs> she's got generational trauma, guys. She's got generational trauma from slavery. Oh my god didn't happen to me and i look forward to a better america where i'm not looking at the past and trying to exact my revenge on the population around me but where i'm trying to make the world a better place and i think that the world would be a better place 
if I no. detach from the- I think that's like her adoptive father's mother she's talking about there. Right? What was it? Or like stepfather or some shit? She had like a black stepfather or adopted father. Isn't that Moroccan blood father? Really? The black guy, the, the, the super black guy there's pictures of her with. That's her actual blood father. You're joking. He doesn't look Mex well, I if it's the picture that I've seen, he doesn't he didn't look Mexican. There is a super black guy that I thought was like her stepfather or some shit. The what I feel uh, could be victimhood. Are you are you saying that uh, black people getting my, my lab law is kind of lacking at this point. I won't go. I don't. Rem I don't remember shit about any of it. I just stopped caring a long time ago. Offended by the N word is them trying to exact their revenge. When you, is I that think what it's, you're implying? I well, I think it's a police. I think it's a police. I think that they think that we should pay. I think that we're not allowed to. Injeed super shattered three dollars and twenty two cents. Have you seen Max with couples therapist Terry Real? Probably too long for stream, but Big Max win. No, I haven't. I have seen some of the, the interviews and shit he did, though. What was the really funny one? Hmm. There was, like, some fucking conversation he had. There was some therapist, some therapist for pedophiles or some shit that he had a conversation with, and it totally broke down because, basically, <laughs> uh, Mr. Girl was saying that it's inherently wrong to have sex with a child. And then the therapist wouldn't agree with that. <laughs> and he's like, wait, why aren't you agreeing with that? Why don't you agree with that? Why would you refuse to agree? And the guy's like, well, I just don't like to cast judgment in case one of my patients sees this. And he's like, well, no, but you should be able to <laughs> say, no, it's inherently wrong to have sex with a child. And that you should be able to say the action's bad without impugning the person for having the, the mental illness. No, that was a thing. It was a thing. One minute. Do I have clips? Wait, okay, wait, no, I might do. Many people listening to this are going to be fixated on the idea of, or the question of, is there an age below which you don't think children should have sex with adults at all? And you, you I think you said the answer is no. And then I think the next question... The answer is, it's culturally dependent. It depends on the kid. Yes. So, but Well, no, but the question is, is there an age biologically in any circumstances where you would say, no, if someone's three years old, an adult shouldn't have sex with them. But you're... The, and so the question is, what is, is there a species-dependent, culturally independent age of consent that you think is should be morally upheld and, and the answer i think is no right yeah i'm not going to make an age i'm not going to put out an age where i think it's okay for children to start consenting and say that that's universal in every culture on the planet no i, I i'm not going to do that i'm sorry to disappoint you max i don't remember this dude's name i think I've, you're being sarcastic heard, winston no i'm not i've learned a lot in my life i'm probably twice as old as you and i've worked with literally several not. several thousand people in psychotherapy and yeah. being a professor of sexuality and i've listened to thousands of stories of people's lives i've listened to stories of people who are sexually abused as children women, men, trans people, all kinds of people who were sexually abused in a variety of ways. When you talk about having sex with a child, what are you talking about? You know, are you talking about coitus? Putting any, a penis nope, inside of any, a child? Any sexual contact. Okay, so we know from research that there's a huge difference in the sexual behaviors and the emotional outcome of the child. If the child is penetrated, they're much more likely Jesus. to refer to it in adulthood as um, problematic. Okay. If they were just eaten out, just, rather than pen Dude. penetrated, there's less trauma. 
I'm not condoning eating out little girls. I'm saying research shows there's less trauma if there's no penetration. There's are you are you condemning it? That's my question. You're not condoning it, but you're are you so like to me there's a social contract between adults and children saying that we'll look out for you. And if a minor, anyone under the age of consent, hears this and hears you, a, a professional, kind of self-proclaimed trusted adult, that you, you're, you're a therapist, you're out there telling people how to navigate the world, and you say the phrase, eating out little girls, I do think that you, you need to either condone or condemn that. You need to have an opinion. And when you don't have an opinion and you just sort of like provocatively float that image, um, I think you're breaking the contract. I think, I think any kid who hears this or hears of this conversation needs to know what you think about that. Oh man, classic. Because there's, that should be some form of payment against what our ancestors did to theirs. Yeah. And when you say not allowed to, you mean they get mad? Yes. Okay. They feel like a, they feel like a victim. Genuinely? It feels like you're saying there's a, there's a dual layer of emotion where they don't feel genuinely offended, but because they're some mad of them about- could be. Some of them could be genuinely, genuinely offended. But it sounds like you're saying that they're pretending to be offended because they're mad lot, about something. A lot of people pretend to be offended. About Including a lot of black. things. Okay, and you're saying black people pretend... I don't think that this is a exclusively black issue about the N-word. But you're saying that black people pretend to be offended by the N-word. He refused to take a stance on it. He absolutely refused to say whether it was right or wrong. And listen. <clears throat> slight. Listen, I feel like there is a slight amount of charity you can possibly give. Someone's saying in chat, he is being probably medically to the point in the sense that it probably is. There probably is a difference in trauma. And there may be some reason why some basis to why you don't, as a therapist, make some firm moral stance on some act. I can maybe see, but when you're in, if you're talking in public like that, you have to be, a, you have to have a better way of navigating that. You have to have a better way of navigating that. You cannot do it like that. That is insane. That is an insane way to do it. That, like it may be that if you're it like let's imagine there's some study that says if you that it, you will have worse outcomes if you make super strong moral condemnations of actions during therapy or some shit like that like that that could make sense to me right and it could make sense why you don't make super strong moral condemnations but yeah you're talking on a stream you're not talking in therapy you're you're talking about like that's insane uh, and to, yeah, to be just describing it as eating out as well, when you're talking about kids, like as if it's just a normal consensual sexual act, like bro, you, you've got to, you're a professional, okay? You're not Mr. Girl. You're a professional. You need a better response here. And we're because they're mad about something else. Yeah, in the way that women pretend to be scared about the pejorative bitch or the pejorative whore. You're not you're not actually upset that someone's calling you a whore. You're upset that there are still social consequences for being called a whore or for being a or for being a whore. You're upset that you are not allowed to have sex like a man. Or that you're upset that there is that misogyny exists still that permeates throughout of cult throughout all of culture and that's why you don't want to get that's why you don't want to get called a bitch. It's not because it genuinely hurts you in that moment. It's because there are other things. Um so I think that we have moved that we we could choose now to move past labor, I think why a lot of that hasn't happened is the point that I brought up before is because black people still have not caught up and a lot of that is because white people have not uh, successfully addressed something that they caused and created. Um, yeah, exactly. If Mr. Girl was saying that he would be saying in, inf in an inflammatory way and he would be saying that doing that to kids is wrong, right? But this guy saying, saying it in that way while not offering a condemnation, just uh, it just feels like it's normalizing. That is just normalizing, is it not? Um, which is black people in poverty i don't think that the first step to a, fo a fully racially integrated society is allowing your white friends to say never. but i do think that it is a um a portion of it like just as i think that there should be reparations um directly funneled in to black schools and black areas and um
there should be racial quotas at jobs and and stuff like that. I believe that white people should be able to sing with their friends without white people getting mad. Maybe even I'm just making the I'm, I guess I'm that is part of it, but I am also just saying that it would be positive for white people to be allowed to do that without even making a, a statement about black people. But do you see why I keep balking at allowed to? Because it feels like you're saying we're not allowed to make black people mad. Okay, well, let's focus less on the reaction then. And then I will just say the blanket statement, which is that I believe if white people are, are, say the N-word. Yeah. That there will come a time when, one, the word has no power because you become so desensitized to it. And two, well, I guess that's still one, or, or let's say one and a half, is that okay. um, people are going to use it less. Thank you, Laura, for your continued like discord they, notifications in the middle of your pre-recorded podcast. Just use do not disturb. That if they call you a nigger, it doesn't hurt your feelings. They're not going to call you a nigger because they want to hurt your feelings. Like, if, if, if like now if you call someone queer, or like a f even, because it is so used now that if a black person here, or if a, if a black person, if a white person, uh, or a black person who is gay, <laughs> here's, um, they're just, I, I mean, oftentimes I think they just laugh. And they say, like, you're weird for being, like, for thinking that it's weird to be gay. And I think that the same thing will happen with the N-word, where people will say, you're weird for thinking it's bad to be black. Like, I don't care if you call me a nigger. It's not a bad thing to be a nigger, to be black. It's not a bad thing to be a fat. So I think that that's another um, thing that will happen. And also, like, the same way I, I believe that we should completely integrate and share cultures in America, uh, I think that there's a big, um, there becomes big uproar against uh, things like cultural appropriation or what is called cultural appropriation, like white people wearing box braids. A lot of people have a big problem with that, especially in my generation. Um, and I just ask, why? Like, why, why would you want to keep something? Well, I, I understand why you would want to keep something if you were oppressed by something in the past. I understand why it would be anger making to see that person who oppressed you for doing it or their their ancestors do that same thing. But I think holding on to that anger keeps us divided and holds us back from being completely racially integrated and appreciating each other's culture and being the most white woman thing ever. It would just be cool if you got if you go over it. And it only affects me on Twitter. Why can't I have it? <laughs> able to live adjacent lives to each other in a hopefully colorblind society someday. I think these are, are all you, positive things that we should strive for. Are you advising white people to say the N-word? Yes. Yeah. Base. Lab one. In, in what context Screaming. are you? Yeah, in what context are you advising them to start saying it more? I guess, I'm, I guess instead of saying that, because I don't want anyone to receive social consequences, because that's a, it's a hard thing for... I guess I speak more to black people then. No, 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 no. The only people who can make the N-word okay for white people are white people themselves, okay? There's more of us. There's more of us. Just start we just need to start saying it um and just say like maybe it's worth making yourself or letting yourself be uncomfortable for a few years to achieve something that could be potentially very good for america maybe it is okay to sit with the fact that that america has a very sordid um past of, of violent extremism against black people and still there's a brighter tomorrow in which you can make a few sacrifices black people can get upset this is what needs to stop white people need to stop getting upset this is what needs to really happen white people Need to stop getting upset and start enjoying the N word. We just need white ass. Being uncomfortable. <laughs> Go ahead, hard as fuck. Um, for a better future, there there are direct choices that every person could make, and black people's choice. White people have the have should. I guess there's a call for both sides. White people to educate yourselves about to do the work. White people to do the work. Um, everyone True. loves doing the work. Uh, no, but white people to seek out black friends because I think that a lot of white people are scared to have black friends because of this reason because they think it's so divisive. They think that black people are different than us in meaningful ways, but they're not different mm -hmm. than us in meaningful ways. Um, and I think that a lot of this like racial divisiveness, especially since the Black Lives Matter protests, has made a lot of white people scared to be to have black friends. What? <laughs> really? What? <laughs> This is just, to this is brand new analysis to me. This is actually maybe the only novel thought I've ever heard Lav express. So I've not heard this said anywhere else. This is truly new. Um, because they don't want to say the wrong thing. I think that white people are so racially con conscious now that they feel uncomfortable around black people, which is bad. So I think, one, if you're a white person, seek out black friends. Uh, and also, if you're a black person, seek out white friends. And um, let them say the N-word. <laughs> Encourage them to say the N-word. <laughs> In, in what context? You mean just to mean like dude? In the, yes, in the way that in all the ways that they feel comfortable that they use it. So if you're a black person who calls your black friends like you're as a joke, which there are a lot of people, especially in Discord chat rooms, who, who say who say stuff like that, um, uh -huh. then you know extend that to white people. And if you're a, a black person who 
isn't okay, isn't comfortable with that, but at least is comfortable um, allowing your white friends to rap to certain uh, songs or to be like, what's what's up? My Stylo has actually told me he personally signs off on all of my sly, sly usage. He, he said that many times. He said that I can cite him as my black friend that lets me say the N word, actually, as well. Yeah, then <laughs> someone's going to clip that. <laughs> then, um, yeah, do that. Do, do what you're comfortable with. But over, overall, I think it's the same. It's driving towards the same goal. Because I think that there are different thresholds of what people find. Like, if you're someone who doesn't like to make offensive jokes, I know that someone is like... I've, I've met people in my life who are just sensitive. They don't like to be sarcastic with people. Like, there are people who certainly don't like to be sarcastic or say edgy things. And I don't say cases, the N-word around black people. Around my black friends, I don't say the N-word. I do say the N-word around my black friends. Yeah. Not all of them. Certainly not all of them. Some of them you don't? Yeah, and we're not as close. <laughs> <laughs> The closest black friends that I have are friends that I can say anything with. Because the closest friends that you have generally are people that you're not afraid to say things with. And that means feelings, that means certain words, that means certain thoughts that you have. I don't think it's that I'm afraid to, I just don't want to. Sure, but I think that if you had a very close black friend, um, who... If they were my real friend. If they were your real friend. Uh, no, but if you, if you had a black person who was your friend who you were extremely close to... I'm pretty close to them. I doubt it. I don't think it's possible to have a, a close relationship with someone that you can't say anything around. I can, I just don't want even, to. Even hurtful things. I don't think they would like stop being friends with me or something. I just think it would hurt them. Sure. So th then th I bring up that there are certain levels and there are certain people in friendships where you adapt. No, to no. But I'm saying like they're... if if, if think, I'm like me, if I'm, I'm, I'm like what's up? Yeah, how's it going? They're gonna be hurt by that. It'll, it'll hurt their feelings. Like it, the the message I'm sending of like well, hey, you're well. Have they told you that or are you just guessing that that's the case? Um, we've talked about it enough that this is clearly <laughs> the case. Well, then don't. Obviously. Not not with me. I mean, I just do. I just know I just know them. I know that they Do you think they feel like, as close to you as they do to their black friends where they're able to just say anything around? Um Matt laughs right, only fourteen years ago it was fine to say the hard R as long as it wasn't in anger. Sure, but that's not I don't think that changes about black people. I think that changes about white people. <clears throat> I don't think that's because black people started getting more upset at the N-word. I think it's because more white people started getting upset at the N-word. So live saying like, listen, blacks, you've just got to stop getting so upset when I post the N word on Twitter. It's like this misses the point totally. I think that, uh, not on this dimension. No, I think. Yeah. So maybe you. Different. So uh, that's still divisive. So maybe you feel that this is as close of a relationship you can have to a black person, but a black but person I'm... can have closer <laughs> relationships because there are words that they don't aren't barred from saying in the relationship. I'm not barred from saying it. I just don't want to. I don't, again, like, sure, but they might ask me not to, but the they can't. boundary is different. They, I don't think they've set a boundary with me about it. I just think they wouldn't like it. And for that reason. That's a boundary. I, if they've told no, you. Not, no, they haven't. They haven't. They've never been like, hey, listen, I really need you to not use the N-word. Uh, like, you, they know they, they know me. Like, they know me and my music and stuff. Like, they've heard me say the N-word a bunch of times. But they but me using it as, like, to mean, like, hey, nigga, how's it going? Like, it's not going to, the feeling I would be <laughs> feeling saying that. <laughs> if I if I if I wanted to, would be something like affection. Like, oh, like, like trade incoming. Around? That's huge. No? Like I, I, about black people. Um, huge if true. Racist jokes. Yeah. I don't know if I make racist jokes in general. Um, I say I definitely say you do with me. Provoc racist jokes with you. Yeah, we have we have shared, um, definitely jokes about <laughs> Jews. Yeah. And I think probably a couple. Uh, definitely some about women. Um, and I think probably maybe a couple about some other minority. Okay. Maybe not black people. Because it feels... It, I, we don't talk about black people Yo, really a lot. Lyrics raid. Thanks just for the, the raid. Just, just lyrics. The walk them in, walk um, them in, walk them in. I... We are watching Mr. Guy and Lav talk about the N-word, okay? Lav is saying that black people need to stop getting so upset about the N-word. Um, I don't know if I make racist jokes. But like, one, so like one of my best friends is Filipino. Wait, wait, wait can you can you can you respond to this idea okay. that if I were to say what's up, Nina? I would be I'd be feeling affectionate. But that's not what they yeah. would. That's not their reaction wouldn't feel like I was being affectionate. It would feel to them like I was hurting them. So I that's why I don't want to. Is is just that I know that the sure. I'm um, not saying to overextend. I'm so in that case, you're doing what, yeah. what you what is appropriate. And then I would if I could if I could be a fly on the wall or a therapist. If I could go into a couple's relationship session with you two, I would say, yeah. is this something that really hurts you? And if it's not, say, okay, I'll role play my black friend. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, not a, not a specific one, but a, a generic black friend. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Why does say, it? Do you not like when Max? It, would you not like it if Max said, "Hey, what's up?" Uh, yeah, I wouldn't like that. That would be really <laughs> uncomfortable, and uh, would feel like he was disregarding my feelings. Okay. And what are those feelings? Um, 
that you're invoking uh, welcome, painful welcome, history. Welcome, welcome, Irish Raiders. Enjoy the N-word. Enjoy the N-word. We're talking about the N-word right now. If you don't like N-word discourse, now is the time. <laughs> Probably leave. For the purpose of saying hi. Just the same way Max wouldn't like it if I said, what up, my Holocaust rat? He doesn't want to think about the Holocaust every time I say hi to him. And I don't want to think about Jim Crow every time he says hi to me. Uh, let's see. What would I say then? I would say, do you say these things with your black friends? Um, rarely. Okay. Well, when you do, since it's the same mm -hmm. word, does it elicit an emotional response of any kind? Um, when I use the N-word with my black friends... When you hear a black person say the N-word towards you. Um, it feels like a shared expression of irreverent anger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait, are they talking about the hard R here still, or have we switched gears? <clears throat> uh, well, that can be humorous. But So you still, to some degree, blame your white friend for the things that happened to your ancestors because of their ancestors and think... No, no, okay, if it's irreverent expression of anger, I feel like, yeah, we're still on the hard to R To some here. degree, their payment to you should be to not say that word around you. <laughs> No, I, th I think it's more that I don't want to commiserate with Max about things that didn't happen to him. Well, or that are not currently that are not currently happening. It's not about my ancestors. It's about the experience of being black on a day-to-day -day basis, which is, is connected to... Listen, it, it, you just got to admit it, okay? Every white person wants to be called the N-word by black people, okay? That's just... Almost, pretty much every white person wants to be called the N-word by black people. That's just facts. Slavery, Jim Crow, racism, whatever. But uh, of of the past, but also it's on it's ongoing, and so as long as they can say it back, though, I think I think maybe maybe sometimes it's like because like if it's if it's a stranger, but like a black person, you know, because if it's a stranger, it can be threatening, you know, <laughs> it can be kind of intimidating, like something bad's gonna happen. Well, so do you I think that this is inherent, or do you think that? This is something eventually that people will be able to move past and towards something different. Do you think that there will always be? Hey, Mister Girl, the pedo guy. I don't know. Is Larry the pedo guy? And, and black friendship. I think. I think. I think my hypothetical black friend would say, "I am scarred. Maybe my children or grandchildren won't feel this way, but so it's not a blood curse. But for me, sure. yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to commiserate, um, playfully." And, and right, I just will not have Larix fans come in here and start doing the Mr. Pedo shit, okay? Listen, we're, we're not having that, all right? Dual way, but just when I say hi to Max, I don't want to commiserate with him about racism in this way. And it, it, so casually and cavalierly. Like, when, when a black person says it... Well, then it's... this would be the case also that I don't think that any black person could be friends with a white person in any, in any real way. And this is out of the meta, sorry. But... He's a fake pedo, bro. He don't even really be fucking on kids like that. Truly a poser. Uh, if you hold this this belief, I don't think that you could in any meaningful way really be integrated and and deep friends with a white person if you still feel like there is a a weight to your relationship because of what is, is happening to you. And that's the case for separatism, which I don't think is appropriate. This is like uh, like men and women. Like, would you think, like... Like, I will, I feel like a deep um, resentment towards men mm -hmm. because of what has happened to women for years. Mm -hmm. It is a burden on my life to feel that and for the lives around me. And it is a, it negates the opportunity to feel completely equal and happy and light and free in my male relationships. And so I feel the pull that I must. Okay, no, that's not, okay. That's not true either. He's a poser pedo. Larix is a real pedo. That's not true either. That's not true either. Let's <laughs> work on that internally, so that we can live. I feel a duty to the future that maybe not everyone does, and maybe that's because I don't believe in God. Where I feel like Freddie Woods super chatted five dollars. I watched Terra Manga Sensei for the plot, not the relationship with his little sister. All right. Okay. Calm down. Calm down. Okay. LLDF, LLDF, okay. Thank you for the $5, though. But the only purpose is to create something better for the future. Where I feel like my direct actions, no even myself, yeah. uh, are my purpose. I think this is different because... I don't think it's most, different in any meaningful way. Most men, the way they fantasize about protecting women or bonding with women is protecting them from other men. And so there's already a channel of men also demonizing other men and wanting to prove that they're one of the good men and oh he's like oh have you met max he's such a sweet guy when they say that they mean he's not a fucking rapist murderer like other fucking men he's one of the well, good ones that's what that... too. that's like all every woman or man with curly hair and a mullet who's a liberal does the same thing 
That's like every. I mean, they gave most of Black Lives Matter their money. Like they were obviously like white people <laughs> who were like, I'm an ally forever, Wakanda forever. Okay. Yeah, but black people don't okay. fantasize yeah. about saving white people from other black people. White people okay, fantasize well. about saving. I know, but in your analogy, in your analogy, no, men no, are black. You no. made an analogy where you were saying that because of what, the way no, women are black people, you're not okay, understanding. Are, yes. Okay, women are black people. Yes. And you're saying you're like a black person, and you try not I'm to. I'm just like a black person in the eyes okay, of Okay, okay. And you're saying you you try not to resent men for what they've done to you. Yes. Because I think it's disadvantageous for the future, and, and I don't think that, that a lot of it's real. Like I don't you're saying think... that black people similarly should do the same thing, and that the analogy is that every... white people try to prove that yes. they're the good white people. Yes, and I think that every person should ask themselves how they can better influence tomorrow. And so, if you value things like racial unity. Because I think that the only way that we get rid of racism, and ultimately that's everyone's goal, is to value racial unity, not to value separation. Wait, can you, can you let me think about this analogy a little bit? This is confusing me. Yeah. Let Max think. Shut up, woman. It is impossible to think with a woman talking. That is true. Uh, to me, saying hi with saying for black people is a way of saying we're in it. We're in it so much all the time. It's so ever present that we can just say hi with it. It's a way to acknowledge the it's just constant a... oppressiveness of racism, right? That's like a lot sure, of it. So, wouldn't a white person saying it to you also acknowledge like this is it, to say it would be an acknowledgement of like we are we are cohesive now. We are. I don't think so. We are I, in I this think... together. I will. It is. It, is so. it can be a way that you can signal. That you no, are an ally. I don't think so. I don't think you even think that. It's funny that you're <laughs> no, saying that. No, I, I, to some you, degree I do, actually. Because if you're that saying when, that with someone and you guys are friends, there's no way that it, you could be saying it. Um, I guess you could I, actually be racist and, and be... No, no, I think, that, I, think the the concern is that, I think the concern is that you're saying it meaninglessly. You're saying you're in it, but you're not in it. You're saying that you're feeling something, oh, but you're not Oh, feeling. you're saying that every time a black person says it to another person, they're consciously thinking? Like, no, we're in it I'm not saying they're consciously. I'm not saying they're consciously. Okay, so why do white it? people I'm, have to be consciously every time they say, every time they say it? They don't. I'm saying that when white people say it, it waters down the meaning to be just. It just means dude. But the point is that you're using the most offensive word you can think of to mean dude because of the constant onslaught of racism. And I'm trying to think of what that would be like in your analogy. So for let me talk about women to for a way women would be talking to each other that men is this whole episode about the N word would insert themselves into that would make you feel like you can't say that you're part of this in the way that you're trying to. The same way that a guy would call me like. When I, when I, when um, I mean the obvious analogy is trans people. That it is Jesus Christ. That's so like real. No, because you're not. You don't become black by saying a word. So it's like um, it's like someone, no, but no, no. I'll, don't try to don't don't weasel out of this. I'm not. You don't it's, become black clear, by saying. There's a good anything. analogy there of trans people wanting to no, participate. No, here's the better analogy. Trans women friend, want to participate. Trans women want to participate in something that you have, and you're telling them they can't. No, they can participate in everything that I have. They can do their hair. They can do whatever. Obviously, they can do. they use your locker room. Um. I don't really care about locker rooms as much. I, I think you don't that... care if a fifty-year-old trans man shares a locker room with a. Yeah, I feel like we've got to. That they've got to be clear about when they're talking about the soft A and when they're talking about the hard R. These are different words. <clears throat> like even when a white person says N word soft A, a w uh, someone might be like, "Oh, you can't say that," but the assumption is still that it's a term of endearment. It's still a dude. It's still a guy. It's still a bro, you know? It's still just a filler male. That's still the assumption. But when so when you hear a hard R, that is... Sorry, soft A. Hard, did I say hard A? Soft, soft A. When you, when you do a hard R... Lyrics tried to raid, but he doesn't have to do auto-redirect yet. <laughs> you should teach him. Okay. But yeah, so the the hard R is always an insult. You assume it's an insult. You d just do. That is what the term is used for. The twelve year old girl. No, they, they, have have only, they have the only. No, they don't have a vagina. They have but a big no, penis. No, because I think that there should be categories still to go into. Uh, I think that sex okay, so my... is, is sex is something that is over race because of certain reasons. Um, I, so I'm, I'm strictly talking racially here. Okay, so. You can, you I mean, can, you, you can refuse me, to engage with my point you, if you want. I don't, I, think it's, I don't think you're engaging in good faith. Child invented the okay. hard day. True. Perhaps. I'll kick a um, with the, so I think it's like if you're a woman and your guy friend comes up to you and is like, what's up, bitch? And the same way that like women talk to each other like, bitch, you're never going to fucking believe what happened. If a guy is like, 
bitch, you're never gonna believe what happened. My immediate thing is gonna be like, what? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like, <laughs> like immediately I'd be like, what the fuck? But then I'm gonna be like, oh, you're trying to like relate to me and this is actually out of love and, and uh, like you're trying to interact with me the way that you've seen me interact with my girlfriends. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to be like, you know what? Do your thing. Do your thing. Like, yeah, oh, like say, oh my God, bitch, I have something to tell you. My friends do, th do this. Sure, it, but when white people, like say you're in a group of like white autist shit posters that all just say the hard R, even when they're saying it ironically, the reason why they're saying it ironically is because it's so offensive as an insult, right? So it's still, it is still being used with that kind of meaning. Um, Don't you think when Destiny called you a dumb bitch, it was different than if a woman called you a dumb bitch? Who? I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, hypothetical. <laughs> Do your thing. Do your thing. Like, yeah, call it. Like, say, oh my god, bitch, I have something to tell you. My friends do, th do this. Um, don't you think when Destiny called you a dumb bitch, it was different than if a woman called you a dumb bitch? Who? I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, hypothetically. If a friend That's called epic. me a dumb bitch. Uh... Yeah. Uh, I think that the, the problem <laughs> with that is how many people are watching. So... If someone calls you a dumb bitch to like signal, so like if I went on, um, like if me and Big Tech, who's my friend, uh, <laughs> if me and Big Tech were hanging out together and he was like, oh, you fucking dumb or whatever, I'd be like, lol, he he he, like we're being fun and I can call him bald or whatever. But then if we're in this front of an epic. audience and his audience is, if my audience is primed to hate bald people, great I'm not call bald. and if his audience is primed to hate, to hate Jewish people, he's not gonna call me a. So the context matters because you also. It feels like you're not engaging with my point though. I am literally engaging with your point. No. Okay. You introduce a new variable that is not part of the question I'm there asking. Are, there's going to be a vari variable in every single scenario because you, you cannot... can come up with to not answer my question. No. That made two points now that you're there, just no, flat out cannot, avoiding. One, no trans Wait, was there a kite there? Was there a kite? There? Did I just... My ears... Okay, noted. No, trans, trans, you trans women are trying to get into what your trans women is there with human beings. I don't under, there's no control situation. These are hypothetical situations where you can control every single variable, and okay, so you don't so have to introduce telling, new ones to not answer the so question. I, no, there's two no, questions, so there's two, two, so two big points you have now this. responded to. Shut up, because yeah. you can control this. In a scenario okay. where yeah. someone has an audience of incels and then calls me a stupid bitch, because there is the audience of incels. Now, if you take away, if you controlled it, where there's not an audience of incels, and we're just talking, and he calls me a dumb bitch, I don't care at all. I understand. This is not the variable. This is going to be a live only stream. Okay, guys, this will be private. I was asking about changing though. Okay, not audience side. I was. The two things I've asked that I feel you have not responded to are, one, isn't it true that you've been very vocal about excluding trans women from your club and saying, listen, you can be, a, you can do a certain thing, but you can't do this other thing. When you do this other thing, you're encroaching on my identity. You're trying to be something you're not. You're fucking pathetic. You're a loser and you should kill yourself. Yeah. Which okay. I should. So, just kidding. No, I, I, let but that, me be but very that, clear that, that I, feels, I am that's like there are I love trans people. I, I know, but to, to a point. And at a certain point, you're saying, but once you take well, it so, too far, so, you're, you're, so you're, if you're, if you're, you're being invasive. So if a trans person, so if a trans woman, if no, because you're going to talk about all the ways that they're different. No, I don't want to hear you talk about the ways they're different. Talk about the ways they're the same. Max, you have to let me talk. Oh my god. Yeah, there, there is a Mexican slur. It's a, it's like a, a morphing of Hispanic with the with the spit part. So, with a trans person... I can't believe you said that. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, this is the difference. So I'm not, because I know they're, you're going to talk about the way they're different. You just said, I just Max, said, I know you're going to talk about... I don't want to hear you talk about the ways they're different. Then I will leave. Then you can leave while I talk to the audience. You can no. You're welcome to so do audience. that. I'm just saying this the isn't the question I'm asking you. Do you understand this isn't the question I'm asking you? I'm going to answer it this way anyway. So That's these fine. two things are different because okay. one, when a white person says yeah, they are not saying now I am black. A trans person can do anything that they want that's feminine, but to say I am a woman now is wrong, and that should not be allowed. You should not be allowed to be transracial. You should not be allowed to be trans uh, to be transgender in the way that you um, become now a different thing. You can be transgender in the way of expression. I have no problem with that. If you want to talk like how you think a woman talks, dress like how you think a woman dresses, do your thing. But to change your category, your meaningful category, um, in that way, well, especially yeah, between... It feels like you're not letting me challenge you. Again. Um, I'm letting you challenge, challenge me, and I'm... You're, you're avoiding the challenge. I don't think so. I, I think that you gave me a very bad um, comparison, because when someone says I'm a woman now, that's not the same thing as a... That's literally the same thing as a white person mm -hmm. saying I'm black now, if they say the N-word. Which, that's mm -hmm. a completely different, separate issue. I, like, I don't there think... There are differences between the two, but there are also similarities. Uh, I have never said that a man is not allowed to look feminine, ever. I'm so I don't know. Or to be feminine or to do things that are um, culturally seen as womanly. So yeah. that's that's the comparison that we're making with... Um, the you're saying, there's no, and, and you're saying there is no overlap between your feelings about trans people or thoughts and a black person's feelings or thoughts about white people saying the N-word. There is no comparison to be made. There's nothing to engage with here. There's no challenge. I think that there are some people... Nothing we could... Open. But I, wait, I feel like you, you, this is this is retarded. I feel like Lav doesn't even agree. Lav doesn't actually think there's no comparison to be made here. What wouldn't she? 
wouldn't she use like the minstrel argument or like you know the the woman face comparisons isn't she gonna she's the type to say that sort of shit no i don't believe that she doesn't there's no comparison to be made here Open up and i maybe i just don't subscribe to this idea but i think that there are some turfs who believe that men should not do feminine things because they believe that's like stolen valor of some sort yeah but i'm not talking about that i'm talking about you i think that if you want to be a femboy or anything i don't that doesn't affect me in any way you should be allowed to do that without social consequence i think that's positive so there's nothing there's nothing to what i'm saying there's no parallels to draw it's all it's just a total swing and a miss is that what you're saying I think so. What do you but doesn't she dish out social consequences, people? Doesn't she like insult these people all the time? I, I think don't. The parallels are. She's always going to have to trust people on Twitter, isn't she? Well, I'm glad you asked. I think that the language thing, where I, I was saying that if I say what's well, on, and they don't, they feel hurt or violated. I think that there's something about women or uh, trans women. At a point that oh. makes you feel that makes you feel violated, like they're encroaching on something that is yours. I felt this. I felt this with um with sex work before, or violence okay. against women. How trans people will say, uh, you know, we're more disproportionately um, um, targeted, targeted, yeah. uh, and more of us are, or we're uh, the most unsafe doing sex work. And then I like that has always made me sort of um, scoff and Personal. laugh. Be yes, because I like obviously women. Every single woman is. Um, could be a victim of, of the things that a trans person is choosing, basically choosing to be a victim of, is what I've thought in the past. Um, okay, so with the N-word, I, I think the parallel there is... But I would also make the case, as well, oh, no. that upon self-reflection, if I go inward and say, okay, is this inward. a... If I go in N-word, if I go yeah. inward, uh, if I go inward, is this a productive anger to have towards trans women? No. It's, uh, women's violence against against people is not uh, explicitly for women, <laughs> right? Like, that is to have, like, a stolen valor thing about violence against women? Silly, I think, ultimately. I think that okay, that is a so, flaw in my thinking because okay. of, of untapped into an unhealed trauma that I have with men that I should probably sure. get past. Okay, so you're saying that better tomorrow. when people are commiserating with you about something that isn't actually true and doesn't actually happen to them, when you feel irritated or weirded no, out by that... it does actually that, happen to them. Like, violence against trans people obviously does happen. I still, I feel like they are choosing... So, like, that's like if a, if a, yeah, black, if a white person decides happening. to be a wigger... And then, and yeah. then it's like, and then it's like, I'm getting people are calling me ghetto. People are like oppressing me. Like white people are oppressing right. me. Then yeah. a, a black person is like, okay, dude, like, what are you? Right. Yeah, and are you saying to that? Yeah. Right, are you saying to that black people, that, that, that black person, that they should get over that feeling? Because... You should. You should not feel your identity is ownership of um, like oppression or victimhood. Yeah. So not right. only That's should my like... black friends, my black friends should be okay with me saying the n word, but they should also be okay with me putting on blackface, <laughs> then complaining when people are mean to me because they think I'm black. <laughs> And they no, should, they should want they to commiserate should, with me about it. They should that. rightly have some uh, questions, but I, I, and they can obviously choose not to be friends with you. It's like obvious uh, that that's true. But uh, yeah, I think. Um, Wait, but then that's social consequence, no? Um. Wait, but isn't that social consequence? I thought she wanted this without social consequence. I thought that was her whole point this whole time. Dude. Like in the future, if we think about like, if you, I mean, we think about Rachel Dolezal, and there is a case to be made that if she was viewed as black, and experience some sort of oppression because people thought she was black, then she does have a similar experience to people in black America, even though she's not of African ancestry. Like, that is a fine thing to ponder about um, and then to talk about. Like, I think that that's, um, like, I, I think that a trans person who passes well can experience misogyny. Um, and that can also be affirming to them, which is sort of, and then and that makes you feel disgust because then something that's hurt you is affirming to them, um, mm -hmm. which is something that you have to reckon with. But I think that mostly why someone who is healed and someone who doesn't feel attached to bad things that happen to them in a, in a way that is kept close to their identity. Um, like, I don't think that Candace Owens would care if one of her friends dressed up in, in blackface. Um, because I don't think that she identifies with really being black as much as she identifies as just having the skin color that she does and then being a person, an American. Um, and I would say that Candace Owens is healed in that way. Uh, and the more that I heal on my journey with, like, my... with the misogyny that has permeated and affected me throughout my life, the less resentment I have towards trans women. That's, like, that's just true. Um, when I was my most unhealed and didn't understand what was happening to me, I was the angriest of trans women. Okay, and, so and that was a positive that, emotion. We should not black hate people, people for something like that. Black people being offended by white people wanting to participate in their victim, victim coded <laughs> traditions, victim coded <laughs> yeah. language. Yeah. When black people get offended by that, that's an, that's a sign that they're not healed. Or that you still harbor resentment. And you're saying that they shouldn't. What if they just do? Do what? 
harbor resentment. I think that that's valid. I think for, but I think that ultimately there should be moving past that as well. I think that there should be a goal to move past your resentments and to, and you don't, but this is just our fundamental differences in thinking is that you don't think that someone can be happy or that someone can heal. From Not a black person. Like Not a black person. <laughs> you don't, black, you people. Think black people are unhealable. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think that that's true. I, I, I feel like it's still happening. How do you heal from something that's happening right now? Well, it's funny because often I, I find that um, people who have exhibited the least amount of uh, adversity for their race, like uh, black people in black communities who don't interact with a lot of white people because they don't want to interact with white people, um, who are have you know great jobs and who go to great colleges in liberal areas like California are often the most outspoken about how racism has affected them when you know reasonably it hasn't affected them in any tangible way. Um, so I don't know. It's it's hard to it's hard to yeah, this is just like this, this has devolved into uh, old lav gibberish. I one canon should be um, about something like that while it's still happening because we don't know how often it's still happening actually I know that 80% of America um, supported Black Lives Matter which is a unprecedented amount of people um, mm -hmm. who believe in full equality um, which is the overwhelming majority and I think probably even more people I think that um, being a racist is a sometimes loud very minute population um, and I think it will get even smaller and smaller as we racially integrate, obviously. And there will be less racist if we do make a conscious effort to racially integrate. Because most of racism is ignorance. It's not being around people. Um, not being able to experience life with people of different backgrounds. So I think it's over overwhelming just a positive choice to do everything you can to racially integrate and to try to act as colorblind as possible. But, um, but going back, sorry. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know just, how. Yeah, she's just yapping. And then also, it's hard. To, this is a hard thing. Because Mr. sometimes patience. <laughs> when you are a victim of a population, <laughs> when you harbor trauma, you think that things are happening more than, they, more than they are. I think that I probably experience more misogyny than I actually do because I'm sensitive to it. I have my radar up. Um, and I think maybe that could also be a possibility if you're black. That you think that you more people are racist than that? Because this is a common mentality of someone who's traumatized. You have your radar up but for, let's, let's for catch goes. anything. Um, so I don't know. Because is that radar advantageous to keep sometimes? Maybe, especially if you're not safe, right? That radar could keep you safe potentially. If I, like, you know, in the case where, um, this is, this is a case for racism, is, uh, it, you know, yeah, that, that guy who didn't want to walk saying. near the, um, the, like, crackhead who got stabbed, who ended up getting stabbed in front of his girlfriend, um, famously a couple of months ago, and it went all over Twitter because people were like, oh, he was, he was too scared to, um, create space between him and a crackhead because he's so liberal, which is true, which did is true. Did he die? Yeah. I think I saw that video. I didn't hear the backstory, though. Yeah, so a lot of people do that, where I've even made the conscious choice, uh, if, like, a, in a place where if I, if a white person came into an elevator and I would move, because I, did, I wanted to create more space. I've made conscious efforts to not move in a case like that because I'm like, oh, I don't want them to think that I'm racist. Mm -hmm. um, and you get stabbed. Yeah, and then I get stabbed. So there are, there are ways that if, if you have a cognitive bias, that it could actually help you. So like, if you're a woman, don't go out, at, like don't go bald to the wall, like, oh, mis you know, misogyny doesn't exist and I, there's, violence against women doesn't exist, so I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna actually walk out of the house naked and um, go to, uh, I'm gonna walk into a rapist home, someone I know is a rapist. Um, so there's some things like that that could actually potentially save you. Um, so I don't mm -hmm. know if a, if a black person should completely forego their victimhood, or at least, um, you know, the threat. Uh, but I don't know how much you have to keep either. It's a, it's a dance, I guess. It's definitely a dance, like with with me. It's like um, I just went on a trip with a bunch of my guy friends, and I was like, I was very aware that like any of them could do something weird to me. So do I like not come if I'm if I'm getting if I'm coming out near the bonfire at night, and I don't usually wear a bra, like should I just like like around this type time of night should I do this or is that like weird to do? Because are any of them. Like, would it even matter? Like, it was like, I had to make conscious decisions where I was like, am I safe here? Even though these are people that I like knew and love. Mm -hmm. um, so Those I don't know, it's like a dance. Who, uh, who usually rape you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So yeah. it's like, it's a, it's a dance that you have to do. But I don't think we should ever let ourselves harden too much. Because I don't do think that's think black good. people, black people have, are too calloused? I think that too callous, I think that black people are overwhelmingly calloused for good reason. And I think that it is probably time in history where they start <laughs> to use, up. use that, use that, um, that exfoliator. Yeah. yeah. At least around people that you trust. In the same way I'm doing with my fucking guy friends. In the same way I'm doing with you. <laughs> you think you're trusting me more? I trust you more than 90% of men, yeah. I don't know if you know this. I'm very, very derangedly mean to most men. I, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think black people should stop wearing their bras at the campfire? Yeah. At least consider it. That means letting their white friends say the N-word casually. At least oh, consider it. Man. Now, okay. black people always push back on this with, why do you need to say that word? You have every other word in the, in the dictionary. Why, yeah. why that word? Why do you want to say that word so bad? Okay, this is... Well, one, the human, the human condition is to want to do things that you're not allowed to do. But also, I think that everyone's doing this. We're just lying Maybe about. this can We're be interesting. I don't know. This is kind uh, of starting to And two, also, like, it would be advantageous. And Alava's lost her point.
So that's the that's the main argument. I think it would be advantageous. Totally... Do you think everyone is doing it? If probably under a certain age. No, I don't think everyone's doing it. Everyone who grew up listening to rap. Sure. Everyone who grew up listening to rap. Just I think every single person at one point in their life has done it. Either does currently or has. In the fun way. Uh, that's both. What you're, that's what I think both, about. but probably more often oh. times. I'm, I'm so glad the two Jews could get together. And figure this out. And tell black people what to do, like we always have. Hey yo! And they always oh. listen. God bless them. God bless. <laughs> Feels like uh, black people are starting to hate Jews. Definitely. True. I think a lot of people are starting to hate Jews. I think, uh, I think the worst PR, I think, first of all, Jews need to hire a new publicist. Because Netanyahu yeah. coming on to be like, and we're starting to build in Gaza, was like the worst thing he could have yeah. possibly done. Um, and then today, the first day of uh, Passover, there was that huge protest of all those Jews in Israel saying, get, the, get Netanyahu out. Netanyahu is one of the worst approval ratings of any uh, world leader. People fucking hate him. And yet he's still, he's still there. He's being crazy. It feels like black Americans think that Israel represents all Jews. It doesn't, in a way. That is the, that is the Mecca. That is our promised holy land. But they think Netanyahu. Thank you for all the Discord slav. Thank you. Because Israel doesn't you. want what is. Israel's been begging for a ceasefire and to stop dropping bombs on innocent people for months now. But nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about the good Jews. They only care about the bad Jews. Of which there are a lot, because there are a lot of bad people. And most of them are Jews. And most of them are Jews. Evidently. Should that be where we end? Sure, I can be here. Feels like an appropriate place to end. Okay. Well, how how how's it going for another twenty minutes? So let I me don't... just end. Let me just my conclusion. Okay. I'm so apologetic for how many times I said the word. Please don't cancel me. Please don't dox me. Please don't buy my house. I'm not racist. I swear to God. I swear to God. I swear to God. And please, 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 let me say the N word. And don't get mad at me when I do, please. I have this inner, I have this inner conflict. It's, when it's, I... it's, it's the ego smoke alarm. It's the ego smoke alarm. It really is. Is the ego equivalent of the chirping smoke alarm in the background of a black man's house? I'm trying to be sensitive toward a group of people, and then I feel very uh, warmly toward you, and then you start uh, being insensitive to that group of people, and it, and then I like, uh, I don't know what to do. Well, I think you understand where I'm coming from, and you know that I'm not, like, bigoted. So I think you're just, you, what you're experiencing is, oh, this thing that I really believed I'm experiencing, I'm experiencing a different viewpoint from someone I know isn't, who isn't racist, of which I have not thought before. But I think you're being insensitive. I am being insensitive, yeah. I'm literally being insensitive. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I, will, I don't know how to exist but you know, in the conversation. But you know I'm doing insensitivity because I think that... I believe, I genuinely believe in a brighter, racially integrated like, What is the white man version? Uh, none. We do it right. <laughs> we don't fuck off. And <laughs> chirping smoke alarms and Discord notifications, okay? In America. And my collateral is ins insensitivity, not my- Wait, sorry, it's my Adobe Creative Cloud nightly notification that goes off. Point is insensitivity. Uh -huh. I'm not saying be insensitive. I'm saying, unfortunately, we have to be insensitive for a, for a greater <laughs> cause. For what I truly think that you believe, and that I genuinely believe is a greater cause. I don't know how to be loving to you and to black people at the same time. That's the beauty when, of life. When, <laughs> in general. No, when is you're... You have uh, to juggle so many complex... Choose. No, you don't. You can oh. choose every... When those in the bottom right faded out. <laughs> Everyone at once. <laughs> I don't know how to do that when you're saying that their feelings aren't, are like fake. I'm not saying that they're fake. I think they're very real. You're saying they're pretending to be offended. I think some people are. But uh, if we're just talking about the people who aren't pretending, <laughs> I think that I believe... But you think most people are pretending. You're like, stop pretending, stop pretending to be offended. Stop pretending you're mad. But I don't think they are pretending. Well, it's hard for me to think that everyone... That's just... I mean, that's more of a me thing. It's just... It, that's... I don't... I'm not saying factually I think that most people are pretending. I'm saying that's probably just, just a me thing. It just seems that way? To me. Yeah, which you can completely choose to disregard because that's completely opinion-based. I mean, all of this is opinion-based. You can regard... You can disregard any of this. But I don't want you to get caught up on that because I can totally reasonably also um, believe someone when they say that most people are offended. And then I would still have the same reaction. Do you know how mad the Radfems would get at me if I... They, they would, it would be like I said the N-word. For me... Uh, no, my super chat tune... Loads of people use my super chat tune. Uh, tune, 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 tune. Uh, Tom uses it, even though... Tom Fullery uses it, even though... That ninja don't even know, there is no way that ninja knows what Persona is. But it's from Persona 4 Dancing. It's a specialist.
There's no way Tom Foolery knows what Persona 4 Dancing is. There's no way he's ever played it. Yet he's using a song from it as, as, his, as his notification. Me to be like, give, give Tunes. men a chance. Thank you for the gift. It'd be like, you Sanchez. fucking cocksucker cunt. Is he gonna play? Nope. <laughs> you got scammed. You got scammed. You're scammed. Bucket, disgusting handmaiden. Like, they'd be fucking mad. So. Telling people that they should. Telling a sick person that they should uh, work towards healing. Or telling a prejudiced person that they should stop being prejudiced makes them very upset. Okay, I have one final challenge question. Okay. Do you think you're jealous of black people's victimhood? Their self indulgence? Like fat people? <laughs> For sure. She wants to say the N word so bad. For sure. Come on. Just say yes. I don't know. Because my immediate thought was well, my immediate thought was well, I have some victimhood too. <laughs> I'm a Jew. <laughs> and I'm a woman. So I know what it feels like. Um, <laughs> which is obviously that would, that would be the answer. Would be yes. But do you know answer. what it feels like to be so encouraged by everyone to revel in it? No. Yeah, no, that, I... Are you jealous of that? I guess, yeah, maybe a little bit. That even when people people say the N-word to be nice, they're, they're trying to be affectionate to black people when they say the N-word. And even that, they're like, oh, you, you're killing me. I'm having slavery flashbacks right now. Are you jealous? Of, and everyone's like, how could you... Even me, I'm, I'm, I say the word, and I'm still defend... I'm still like, how, Leah, how could you say this? Are you jealous of that that, that amount of... I just, I'm having a panic attack that we're not recording right now. Hold on. We've got to be. Yeah. If we're not, I'll kill myself. We are. Holy shit. Holy shit. Okay, sorry, keep going. Oh wait, wait, wait. lav, lav leaks. Holy shit! Holy What's shit! What's going okay, on? What can, what can we identify from here? Oh, just just call him Mister Go. LMF in the DMs. Oh, that's a name that sticks out. Oh, and Jube. Where are you going? Are you jealous of that amount of encouragement and indulgence? Yeah, I think I'd like to be a victim more. I think I'd love nothing more than to wallow and be a a puddle of. Every self indulgence. Who's the fucking every yeah. victim indulgence? I think I would love to sit in a room where everyone was encouraging me that I was not in control of anything that has ever happened to me or that could happen to me, and that I'm doing everything right. Yeah, I think that that would be awesome. I think that'd feel really good. But value wise, I am glad that no one does that. It's like being a baby. Yeah, it is like being a baby. I think we in, uh, I get accused of doing black that. people a lot. I get accused of doing that with you. Maybe you do. We do that to people that we love. I would say that's one of the biggest criticisms I get um, lately is that I encourage you too much and that I don't tell you. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. Accountability, that I don't hold you accountable. It's possible I have these values of accountability because so many people have projected that onto me. If I was a different sort of person, I obviously wouldn't believe the things I believe because I'd be a different person. So, of course, my worldview is influenced yeah, by I'm, things I'm, that have yeah, happened totally to me. And maybe me, with. nobody allowing me to be a victim makes me not want to allow anyone to be a victim as well. Sort of cycle of behavior. Because surely, I, I mean, also, if, if, if any of my black friends came up to me and were like, fuck, I'm like, the world feels heavy because I'm black and because all these things have happened to my ancestors and me even. There's no reality in which I'd there's say. There's a song about that, actually, Lav. There's a, there's a song about that. Okay. If this was someone that I love, there's no reality that I would say. Yeah, but fuck up. <laughs> I'd be like, I can't even imagine. I, like, I can't even, I'd, I'd let them say whatever they wanted to say. I'd let them be a victim for as long as they wanted to be a victim. But still, I'd have the value that they probably, it would behoove them, at least, to solve the problem. If the problem needs solving, which I think it does, because I think that you can avoid things like racism and people being upset by racism by doing what I'm saying to do. So I, maybe it's like, it's just very, like, problem analysis, logistical, like, if you want to solve the problem, this is what you do. And that's what I believe that this is. I believe that this stops racism. Or at least not saying the other, but racial integration, which I think a, a, a token of full racial integration is white people being able to say the word. Is there a non-Discord notif version of this, or is this the final cut? Final cut. This is the final cut. Yep. The prepared podcast they put out. Yep. Well, she just... right now, so I hope yeah. No shit. No shit. You you realize now? An hour and forty minutes into the podcast, you couldn't have just gone on Do Not Disturb. Sorry about that. If you're hearing that, it's very unprofessional. I don't know how to shut that off. I'm tech retarded because I'm old. You, just go. <laughs> just go on Do Not Disturb on Discord. <laughs> she doesn't know. <laughs> What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, this is Lav's podcast. Mr. Girl just shows up for it. He's... I'm a woman. It's still happening. So, 
sorry, listener. You should be you should be recording these and uploading them. Sorry, did I interrupt your um, staring blankly, uh, drooling into the camera moment? <laughs> sorry. Do you feel? What are your feelings about this episode? Is way too long. What do you what do you what are your feelings about? Um, well, I've actually literally given you this. This is true. Dude. This is true. Women hate looking in the settings of apps they use. That is so true. That before, where I say that you do infantilize me, and it is bad for me. Yeah. I, part of the reason why we had our friend breakup is because I said that you let me stew in a way that was extremely unproductive and um and troubling and um uh sabotage for me. You let me self sabotage myself, and it was keeping me unhappy. And I didn't like that about our friendship. I thought it was very bad for me and you probably to enable that. My black friends love it. Because they it feels it. good. It feels they fucking good. Love it. They love it. It feels good. While you were doing it, while you were saying, oh no, I did nothing wrong and I was victimized by this man, I <laughs> felt like a fu I felt incredible. It was just what the doctor ordered, just like mom didn't used to make. Like it was, mm. it felt so fucking good because I'd experienced it very little in my life. But then moving on, once I wanted to move on, once I felt sufficiently like, or once I was like so depressed for weeks and months, I was like, okay, what changes here? And a lot of that was reflection. And then a lot of that was like, okay, what can I be doing differently? And also, how did I, like, how did I contribute? And that helped me. And then I didn't need you anymore. And in fact, being around you made me worse. Yeah. So I think that this is perfectly, everything comes down to the same thing. Which is our relationship. The end word is really about us. What do you think about it? Real end yeah. word. It's friends we made along the way. These we notifications guess. are brutal. These notifications are going crazy. I don't know how to turn them off. But what'd you say? Pretty harsh? Yeah. What is? You. What yourself? What do you mean? Um. She spends way too much time on Discord to not know see, or to wallow and how to turn her fucking notifications off. This is absurd. This is absurd. Someone needs to fix this. Self destruct. Or. A man in her life needs to step in. Get, get over everything and everything's your fault. No, so this is your BPD speaking. Let it go for a second. Let go of your preconceived notions of choices and how you have to choose one thing or the other thing. Okay. You can be in somewhere in the middle. Where maybe you have some friends who do this to you, who let you be a victim, or maybe you have a, someone who lets you be a victim for half the time. Or asks, do you want me to let you cry right now? Or do you want me to help you solve this problem? And you can decide whether or not you want to do either. You seem pretty set on problem solving. I'm no, this isn't paid do. content. No, they put this up for free. I'm much happier now. Than I was <laughs> when we were talking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I also don't feel as um safe. But I don't know how often you're supposed to feel safe. I don't know how often it's reasonable oh. until you just become, your friends become an echo chamber for you. I think that that's stag I, I I don't know if I believe in stagnation like that. But I definitely feel way more unsafe now. Let's go. And, and Let's go. She's so popular, guys. She's so popular. Like, I'm so like, glad I get to have experience of being a woman. Maybe, maybe in a bad direction, but I think in my case it's positive. Hopefully. Or, or something bad. Yeah, it's on that. Twitter and Substack. Soon. This is how it feels to be a woman Holy online, shit. guys. This is how it feels to be a woman Actually, I don't even think that they're hearing them because this is a window capture. No. So we are right. hearing well, it. You can see your, are you going to OBS? Yeah. You can see your uh, audio. If, they, if the bars jump when the noise has happened, then they're hearing them. Okay, be really quiet so I can see. Wait, where's the sources? Wait, audio. Under audio, audio mixer. Audio mixer or window capture? Wait. Should be a window that, or a panel that says audio mixer. Wait, no one's even messaging her. These are ser This is happening in servers. This is server notifications. She hasn't muted. Dude. Or how many there is? There's not on mine. No. Oh. So in fact, I have no idea. But if you're um, if you hear this, I'm so sorry, because it's really bad. It is so bad. It is actually so bad right now. So I think we have to. I don't know what, where this is coming from. I don't even. Nobody talks to me this much. I don't know what this is going from. <laughs> okay. You feel good about this? No, I feel sad. <laughs> but yeah, we can still be sad. <laughs> what do you feel sad about? Uh... Uh, I don't know. Uh... <laughs> I guess just uh. <laughs> that you're unforgiving with yourself. Harsh. They just say you're harsh with yourself. So I think I'm self-aware. I think I see that as self-awareness. Yeah. Or con I think I see a strong constitution. I think I value that in a person. I don't know how to help you with that because I have the same problem. That's what I'm sad about. Hmm. I'll work on it. Be less sad. You should, you should You should. do contrary action. You should think about why you're sad and then be less sad. Because it's unproductive. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think, that's a, I think this is a good time to end. Okay. So yeah, you think? Out, oh, where can I find you? Do not disturb, Lav. Do not disturb. Open your Discord. Go to your profile in the bottom left-hand corner. Click on your username and open up the activity thing where it says online and turn it to red where it says do not disturb while you're recording the podcast. Thank you. Please. Please. Thank you. Fix this next week. Please. Please. I can't. <laughs>
Okay, well, you'll find him here every week for an hour, but today it's two hours, so that's awesome. Um, every day for an hour. Every, every day for an Every single day for an hour. Every Monday. <laughs> every Monday. Max has all, yeah, at all times, in- really. I, have on, I don't take it off of Do Not Disturb. I'm always on Do Not Disturb. I, I don't want to hear fucking noises from Discord. I'll check my messages when I want to check my fucking messages. I'm of one hour. Yeah. And we know every single time it's not going to be an hour, so look forward to an hour plus every Monday from your favorite right. podcast, Padded Walls. Thank you, and good night. Good from Israel. <laughs> okay. She kind of won with that. She kind of won with that. She got kind of destroyed in the podcast, but won in the end there. And that, oh, dude, she's got to fix the fucking notification. I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> I do. I feel like a rage in my chest. You know, like. I'm actually slightly bothered 